Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you a meal prep. This is going to be my week one of eating for my 30 day weight loss challenge. So I decided to share with you guys what I will be eating for week one. So here I have um, a solid, like a grilled chicken solid with some boiled eggs. And here I have some chicken teriyaki with some cauliflower, which I pretty much overcooked. But this is the lunch portion here. This is also another lunch option, which is a salad with the ground turkey and spinach. We have two eggs as well. Then for the dinner options, we have beef stew for two dinners with broccoli. And then for these other dinner options, we have spaghetti squash with ground turkey and spinach. This is the salad that's supposed to go in with the spaghetti, so just like a little side salad with the spaghetti, but I need to heat this up first, so I'll put the salad in there tomorrow or whenever I decide to eat it. We have some more chicken teriyaki over here with the cauliflower. Now this is five lunches and five dinners. Some days I just want a smoothie for lunch, so I probably will make like a green smoothie for one of the days that I'm not so hungry. But this is what I'm going to be eating. Um, everything is highly nutritional. It's hearty. It's filling. And I eat and I still lose weight. So I'm not starving at all. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're going to go ahead and start off with the chicken Caesar salad. do is just make a salad just a simple salad with these what are these iceberg garden lettuce it has iceberg lettuce carrots and red cabbage and then I already diced up some cucumbers and tomatoes I have all of my seasonings here and I use some garlic powder I use some lemon pepper seasoning salt just a little bit and some red peppers because I love everything spicy and I also use some of the Mrs. Dash chicken seasoning and some grated Parmesan cheese. And I mixed everything together. I added a little bit more of the cucumbers and tomatoes to the top and then I seasoned it again. Now I am going to go ahead and make the grilled chicken for my salad. And I also have on some eggs. So I pretty much have on how many eggs? About six eggs for my salad. And I have like some grilled chicken that I'm about to throw on this little George Foreman grill. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in. This doesn't take no time to get heated, but I seasoned this. Well, I cleaned everything first and then I seasoned that. Um, these are all the seasonings that I used back there. I'm just going to go ahead and throw some of these pieces on now. So I have my eggs off of the eye and I have them in here cooling off in some cool water and a few pieces of ice. And I have two pieces of my chicken breast done. I have about uh, six more minutes. I just put the last piece on here, um, but it cooks really, really fast, you guys. But I like a nice little char on it, as you guys can see. And then I'm gonna just let these cool off before I cut them into like skinny strips because I want to preserve like the juice that's in it. So I will be back once I slice this up and peel my eggs or crack them, peel them, whatever. All right, now that everything is pretty much done for the salad, I'm just going to put some of the salad in two of my lunch containers. I'm also going to have salad for some of my dinner options, but I want to keep the salad in the bigger bowl because I would have to heat my dinner up. So I don't want to heat the dinner up with the salad on the plate. You get what I'm saying? So I'm just going to go ahead and add some salad in. I'm going to get a nice amount of salad. Alrighty, so we got that on there nice and packed. <laughs> Not shy with the salad. And so I'm just going to throw in four eggs. I'm just going to add in some meat to both of those try to make it look a little pretty you know I told you guys I eat with my eyes I needed to look popping what I'm going to do next is just go ahead and sprinkle some of this Parmesan cheese on top just a little bit a dash or two <laughs> and that's pretty much it for my lunch option for two of the days Okay, so here's everything we're going to be needing for this chicken stir fry. 
I have some chicken breast that I sliced up really thin. I have some carrot chips. I have some broccoli that I cut up yesterday to make them more like the florets. I have some bell peppers that I chopped up yesterday as well. I have some green onion. I have some regular onion. Focus. Mm, yeah, there we go. So I have the Goya minced garlic. Um, I also have some mushrooms. And then I have a little bit of this spiralized zucchini. If you guys want to see my recipe um, with the spiralized zucchini and carrots, I will leave that in the description box so you guys can go ahead and check that out. So over here I have some seasoning. Sorry, it got dark. I have my ginger. I have the Mrs. Dash extra spicy. The Mrs. Dash garlic and herb. And I have the Mrs. Dash chicken seasoning. I don't want to have too much salt in this recipe because I am going to be using this teriyaki sauce because this is going to be a teriyaki chicken stir fry. And then I also have some Goya extra virgin olive oil. So I have my chicken breast in here with the olive oil and that is frying up. I'm going to go ahead and add some of this uh, Mrs. Dash extra spicy seasoning. I like it nice and spicy and I'm going to add some of the Mrs. Dash uh, garlic and herb seasoning as well and then I'm going to add some of the Mrs. Dash chicken seasoning that's going to give it a nice little flavor not too much and then I'm just going to go ahead and mix that all in let me know what you guys think about me doing this like vlog style as opposed to me like doing like a voiceover but I just think that this is like more personable like just sitting here like talking to you guys as I am cooking but just let me know what you guys like and I'm whipping it up <laughs> getting that nice and fried chicken is it's got a nice little sear on it so I'm going to go ahead and take this out of the pot and we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more of olive oil and this is going to be for the vegetables. So I'm basically going to go ahead and add as much onions as I like. I like a lot of onions. Then I'm going to add some of these green onions as well. Get some of those in there. And I'm going to go ahead and add in just a spoonful of this Goya minced garlic. We just want to get like a nice little coating on the onions until like they turn pretty transparent. In goes the mushrooms. Just going to like saute that around for a little bit. And then I'm going to let this like cook up for maybe a minute and a half and then I'll be back with the next ingredient. Okay, so that has been steaming for a good minute and a half. I'm just gonna go ahead and just toss it up a bit. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add in some green peppers. I'm just gonna move that to the side for a second. Maybe four spoons of peppers. I'm just adding that onto the side that I cleared out. Okay. And then we can just go ahead and incorporate those. And then I'm going to toss in some of these carrot chips back here. A nice little amount of carrot chips. Stir this up one more time. And I'm going to turn up the heat once I give this a nice little toss. Just going to turn up the heat a little bit and I'm putting the carrots in now because the carrots take a little bit longer to stir fry but I do like them a little bit crunchy like that's like the thing about stir fry is that the ingredients can be a little bit crunchy so I'm just going to go ahead and let that steam up for like two minutes I'm back so let's take a look at that look at that nice steam go ahead and stir that around and we're going to go ahead and toss in the broccoli because we don't want anything in here to get mushy. I'm generous with broccoli because I love broccoli. And broccoli is high in fiber so it's great for the digestion system. So I'm just adding a ton of broccoli into it. 
I'm using a Mrs. Dash Extra Spicy. Just put a little bit more spice on it. I'm going to be adding some of this ground ginger. It's going to give it like a little sweet taste even though the teriyaki sauce is pretty sweet. Here we go. Some ginger powder. And normally I don't like sweet food. I'm more of a, like a savory type of person. But this gives it like the ultimate like balance. It tastes amazing. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and like stir this up. And then we're going to kind of let this steam up for about two minutes. Try not to overcook anything that's in here because I want it to still have like a little nice little crunch. So we're going to go ahead and get the lid on this so it can steam up pretty nice. So we're back and everything is steaming up really really nice. Just give that a nice little toss. And so far we've been cooking this for about I guess 30 minutes so far. It would have took longer if I didn't prep everything. That's why I always stress. So I'm just going to grab my chicken. I'm going to add that back into it. Give it a good mix in. And now we're going to let this steam for another minute. And then we'll be back with the final couple ingredients. So now we're going to go ahead and give this another stir. It's called stir fry for a reason. <laughs> You got to stir. So I wish I had a bigger wok. I am going to invest in one. But for right now, this is just going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and just add this into it. So it can be like a noodle stir fry pretty much. Now I'm going to add some of the teriyaki sauce. Get it all over. Then I'm going to take some tongs and just kind of work that up. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of that stir fry on top after like mixing everything. Once I put the stir fry over top, then I'm basically going to be done like three minutes or so. So I'm just going to put that on and then we're just going to put the lid on and when I come back, Three minutes later, it should be done. Dinner is served. So I'm gonna have the chicken stir fry for lunch for two days, and then I'm gonna have it for dinner for two days. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some of this into each of my containers. I think I'm just gonna have this for three days just because I want to make sure I have enough so that I'm not like overeating or like craving any like junk. So I'm going to just go ahead and pour some juice. So that's about taken care of. So now I'm just going to like wash up my dishes, uh, put up this food and we're going to move on to the next dish. with a spaghetti squash if you guys have never seen a spaghetti squash this is what it looks like so I am basically going to be cutting this in half but pretty much this is like a low calorie like spaghetti it still has like carbs and stuff in it but this is a better alternative to regular pasta but basically you want to take a really sharp knife and you want to like jab it in just go straight in and then you want to go down and you want to rock your knife back and forth until you like break it and you just keep going around until you like loosen it up it's really hard to cut but you just really need to like work with it and eventually you're going to feel it like crack just keep rocking your knife back and forth like this and you hear it like loosen it up it might not be an even cut but it's okay as long as you get through it Woo! we got through you guys this is what the inside looks like basically want to scrape all of this out it has seeds in here and I was told that you can make pumpkin seeds out of this just like roast the seeds in the oven but I've never tried that um, so you just want to take like a spoon and you want to dig out And this is a 
almost four pound uh, spaghetti squash. So it's pretty big. Um, the last one that I made, it was bigger than this. That one probably was like five pounds. <laughs> it was huge. It was enough to feed me for four days. So, but what you want to do next is kind of like season your spaghetti squash. I'm going to use some sea salt because as I mentioned, it doesn't have like a flavor to it. So you, you definitely want to go around and like add some seasoning to it. I'm telling you, like it may seem like I'm adding a lot, but once it like cooked down, it's not going to taste like anything, like nothing. <laughs> so I'm just going to add like salt and pepper to it. And then I'm going to sit this to the side and I'm going to work on the next one. So that's what it looks like. And I'm just standing it up in this bowl because the bottoms of it, like on one side it has like this little stem right here. So it's just easier for it to like stand up while I add like my little salt and pepper. And I'm just going to pour like a little more than half of cup of water. I'm just going to pour that into the pan. We're just going to keep those upside down and we're going to put them in the oven for 35 minutes. So uh, while this is baking in the oven or roasting in the oven, if you will, I am going to get started with the ground turkey. Oh my God, this pot looks so ashy. It looked like it had enough already. <laughs> I cannot wait to get a new wok or a frying pan or whatever. So we're going to start off by turning on the pot, getting that nice and hot. And then we're going to go ahead and add some oil in. So just add just enough oil just to saute the vegetables. I'm going to add about three spoons full of onions. You can add as much as you like, as little as you like. Yeah, this is one of those things where you just add what you like to eat, you know? I'm going to add in some of these green onions. Three scoops. I'm going to add in about three scoops of the peppers. Matter of fact, let's make it four. Let's go all out. And then I'm going to add a spoonful of the minced garlic. And we're just going to saute this up. So I think these are just about done. Get those like another quick little toss. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in my ground turkey. We got our ground turkey. We're just going to go ahead and add that in. And I'm just going to chop this up. So let's check that out. Look like it's getting done. I love me some ground turkey. I used to just be strictly about ground beef until I was like introduced to ground turkey and it's just so much more better to me. It just tastes healthier, you know? So now I'm just going to add some seasoning into it. And just a bit of adobo seasoning. Because as I mentioned, spaghetti squash don't have no taste so you're going to need some taste in there. Um, we're going to add some onion powder to taste. We're also going to add the rest of this chicken seasoning from Mrs. Dash. Well, I might not need that much. Well, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and add that in. Um, we're going to add some black pepper. And then we're going to add some garlic powder. And then my um, spaghetti squash is almost done. So I'm going to take that out of the oven and let it cool off for about 10 minutes before I actually get the spaghetti out of it. So I'm adding a ton of, I'm adding a ton of crushed red peppers. And then we're going to go ahead and give that a whirl. Just mix it all up. And now we're going to add the spinach to it because the meat is just about done so I'm going to add a lot of spinach because spinach always like disappears once you put it in so it looks like a lot once you put it in there but it's really not going to be that much so I'm just adding like a heaping amount of spinach I'm basically just going to put the lid on and let that kind of like steam down a little bit and then I will 
like mix it all in together all right so this is about ready so i'm just going to go ahead and just stir that around and as you can see i put so much as you guys can see i put so much spinach and it just welts down to like this little bit of spinach but it's like all good it's all good and i even put more after i turned the camera off <laughs> but i love spinach you guys so this is almost about done the spinach needs about another 30 seconds so we're going to add the organic sauce um just going to add the rest of this marinara to it add the marinara bam then we're going to add the roasted garlic add the rest of that and I'm not going to add any water like I would normally do with this because it's already a little thinned out because it's like, you know, organic or whatever. So it's a little bit more thinned out. And I don't have any paste to like thicken it up. So I'm just using what I have. But you just want to go ahead and mix that well. This needs to simmer. So I'm going to put the lid on, turn it on low, and we're going to let this kind of simmer. Or shimmy his way down okay hey guys so my spaghetti squash just about cooled off enough for me to handle and the way you can tell that it's done is because the outer portion is going to be like soft and flexible um i think i should have took it out a little bit sooner but i was still handling the ground turkey so i left it in the oven you just want to like pull the spaghetti out you just want to take your fork and just kind of like pull it out now this right here is a little bit overcooked a little more than I would like. We're gonna go ahead and take this out. I'm going to just take this one out as well. Let me see if this one does it. Normally you just have to stick it in and then turn your fork like you're doing spaghetti and it would just whirl around. But because it's too soft, when you overcook it, like you just pretty much scrape it out and it'll just fall out. I prefer mine a little bit crunchy um, just so it tastes more like spaghetti even though it don't really taste like spaghetti it's like an alternative to spaghetti so I'm just gonna like put a little bit more like salt and pepper on here so you really need like some type of seasoning on there um, or else you're gonna think you're not eating anything I'm um, just gonna put more pepper I'm just gonna put some of the spaghetti squash in this section here and then we're gonna put some on here so just remember to take it out like 30 minutes like don't let it sit in there because it'll still be cooking you need to take it out and let it like cool off so this is pretty much the meat sauce looks mighty delicious and then I'm going to pour like a little bit more of this marinara sauce. I'm just going to put that on top because then tomorrow when I heat it up, it's going to taste real bomb. Like in the sauce will be heated up with it tomorrow. To top it off, I'm going to add some grated Parmesan cheese just on top. So I'll probably just have the um lettuce on the side and no dressing so it's just going to be both sides are going to have a little bit of salad and that's going to be a dinner it's healthy it's filling like you don't have to feel like unsatisfied i'm not the type to come on camera and show you guys a piece of bread and avocado and say that's all i eat and then turn the camera off and start golfing stuff down this is what i eat i eat and i still lose weight but yeah that is that is the meal. Okay, we are on, I think, the last meal. And this is going to be some beef stew. So I have me some extra lean beef stew. I'm just going to pour this into this old school pot. Pour some water in. Pour some water in. I'm going to like let it cook for 30 minutes on high and then I'm going to slow cook it because I cannot stand when um 
beef is like chewy or it's not like tender and succulent like I need my stuff to be like succulent so I'm just gonna let this come to a boil then I'll turn it down on low and let it like slow cook so I'm gonna cut these into like smaller sections and then I'm going to use my dicer because I just don't like cutting stuff up <laughs> so we'll use a dicer this should be enough. If not, I'll just cut up another one. So, we're going to use my Dysa. Let me move this over. I'm just going to pop those in and dice them up. these carrots that I chopped up so I'm going to add in some of these I'm going to let those steam in there for about maybe 10-15 minutes so I'm about to add some onions in here should be boiling now add some of these onions nice amount I don't have any celery, so I'm not adding any celery to it, but a nice amount of onions. Then I'm going to add some green onions as well. I'm going to go ahead and put those in. I might not need all of those, but let's see. because I don't feel like having to store them. Now I'm going to season this. I'm going to add some onion powder just to give that kick to the onions. I'm going to add some garlic powder and this one is the one with the parsley flakes in it but I probably will go back and add a little bit more of parsley flakes. I'm going to add some black pepper and then I'm going to add some crushed red pepper seeds and then I have this beef stew packet by Mrs. Dash. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this packet in. I don't know if I need the whole thing, but let me just stir and look. See how that looks. And this is salt free, so you don't have to worry about like too much sodium. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the whole pack in. So I'm just going to put the lid back on and just let that like simmer on low for maybe 20 minutes and then I'll come back and check it, stir it up and see if everything is softening up. Okay, so this beef stew is done. The potatoes are perfect, the carrots are perfect, the meat is nice and tender. Um, yeah. So basically, I'm just going to put this in my containers. I'm going to try to get a nice even amount of carrots and everything. I should be holding it this way. So I'm probably going to make some broccoli to go with this on the side just because I love broccoli. So I'll probably just make some steamed broccoli and you'll probably see that towards the beginning of the video. Alright, so I have some butter in this skillet and I'm going to just dump this broccoli in there since I don't want this to go bad so I'm just going to go ahead and cook it while I'm at it. And you guys don't want to know what time it is. It's 2 in the morning and I'm still up cooking. But I'm going to put some adobo seasoning on here. Red pepper seeds. Y'all already know the drill. Like it ain't really too much to think about when it comes to what I use. It's either Mrs. Dash, crushed red pepper seeds, black pepper, garlic. So we're 
got the butter in there we got the seasonings and now I'm just going to mix that all up this is the last thing that I'm cooking for today um so happy because tomorrow I get to wake up eat what I want work out do what I want and I can do it the next day after that and the next day after that and the next day after that and I don't have too much to worry about just pouring a little bit of water in and that should be enough to um, get it nice and steamed and this should take no more than 10 minutes I'm just going to go ahead and add some to the sides so I hope you guys enjoyed this video of my little meal prep for week one for my weight loss challenge that I have going on. I'll link that video down below if you guys are lost and don't know what I'm talking about. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting my channel and subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing. I will see you guys in my next video.